Hello everyone, namaste. Uh, my name is Linda Gedbois and this is another in a series I call uh, uh, a quick how-to series on mind mastery and they're just basically quick ideas and tips on how to uh, work with your mind in a way that trains it uh, so that you can use it in a more powerful way. And um, this painting right here is called Contemplation and um, it's basically symbolic, like all the work that I do, and it, it basically, um, our most powerful form of learning is what we call intuitive learning, or what some people refer to as, as lunar knowledge, which is the right brain, interconnected, unifying, synthesizing quality of the mind. Um, that sees big pictures and ties everything together rather than leaving everything broke off into fragmented parts. And of course, some of this I won't go into because it's pretty in-depth symbology. But basically, uh, the man who kind of creates his own little island, his own little world, and the water represents the emotional qualities that are beating up against it. And he's contemplating reality at different levels um, and through different landscapes or different qualities of existence. And there's like eight layers of reality, which is reflective of the octave. And there's different qualities associated with it. But um, what it basically states is that in trans what we call transformative psychology is that all true learning only takes place through experience. And so that means, you know, it's not enough to sit in a lecture, to read a book, to get something, grasp something from the intellectual perspective, but you have to be able to actually do that knowledge. You have to be able to live it. Um, to learn means to, by living it, we earn it, or we apprehend those qualities and the ability to utilize that knowledge at a practical level. So, um, but there's basically, <laughs> and I'm sure many of you have heard the, the term um, that the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between an actual experience and an imagined experience. The mind works simply by holding something in it. A memory, once the only what we could call actual experience is actually what's happening right here in this minute. And as soon as this minute passes, it only exists in my imagination. And if I recall a memory, I recall it in my imagination and relive it, recapture it, and kind of go through it. But at that point, it doesn't really exist any place except in my imagination. Well, people don't realize <laughs> that the same imaginative ability, the same imaginative quality that creates what we call memory, which is what the subconscious mind works off of, right? So all the patterning and programming that we're given the subconscious mind is basically a form of imagined experience because once it passes, it's in the imaginative memory state. So what this tells us <laughs> is that we can actually experience things two ways. We can actually experience them, or we can experience them in our imagination by becoming very good with our imagination and being able to vividly imagine things as if they're happening as an actual full sensory, full conceptualized experience. And if we get good at programming our mind like this, it basically programs the subconscious mind, gives it a pattern for behavior, that's what programming means, the, the subconscious mind doesn't have a conscious, you know, choice and free will like the conscious mind does. So it has to be given a pattern, which is why it operates off of memory. It has to have a pattern that it can fulfill, or that it can act out, or that it can perform. And, that, you know, it's, it's the part of our body that beats our heart, breathes our lungs, you know, circulates our blood, makes babies, you know, makes the back of our head itch, stuff like that. But it doesn't make conscious decisions it simply operates off of um, the basic conditioning that gave it a, a primary program to run when it was young, what we call the formative years, which was simply a product of the soul. But the conscious mind has the ability, the conscious mind is the creative mind, it has the ability to intentionally create an experience in the imagination and run that like a mental rehearsal over and over so that it becomes a natural, almost like a memory that serves to program the subconscious mind who thinks it is an actual experience. Plus, you know, all transformation truly takes place at the level of the identity. And how our identity is formed is our identity, you know, we, we grow up, we, we develop a personality. Our personality is a basic 
direct correspondence to our soul, to the initial patterning that we come into life with. And then when the front part of the brain starts developing, we go out and through our personality and the types of experiences that we have, we start identifying and creating an identity, a sense of ourself in our environment. So our identity is how we sense ourselves in reaction to our own thought process, in reaction to experiences, in relationship with everything or with other people. Every time we're interactive and in a situation, we're forming a sense of ourselves in that situation. And we say that you, a person can't do something that they can't imagine, right? And this is this has a lot to do, we won't go into depth on this, but um, we do offer classes at Creative Transformations where we go into depth about uh, the soul seed, the God seed, how you're born into the world as a seeded, you know, that determines your destiny and, and what you're capable of and your potential and all that stuff. But basically, um, the reason we can imagine certain things and not other things is because those qualities, those tendencies, that pattern, that seeded information is in us to imagine. And in order to be able to do something, we have to be able to imagine it first or create an internal experience of it in order to produce an outside experience of it. The internal reality is what organizes, sets up. Uh, we talked in an earlier tape about how the energy field extends from the body. This is the subconscious mind. And it extends out into our environment. And that vibration serves to organize and structure and attract to us uh, energy of a light quality. You know, the light quality means of the same dynamic or the same interactive. It's like somebody who has a part in our movie, so to speak, senses our vibratory, you know, and they say, oh, you got a part in my movie too, and next thing you know, we're meeting them or we're talking to them or, you know, we bump into them. This is how we actually arrange and attract things at a subconscious level is through the vibratory frequency that we're putting off. But basically, um, Another way to learn information, learn new ideas, new skills, new ways of behaving, uh, new ways of being in the world, is by learning to use your imagination to vividly create an experience, a desired experience in your mind, make it so lifelike with sensory enhancement by using, uh, you know, what are you seeing, what are you hearing, what are you feeling, give it a full sensory sensation, kind of like... Um, <laughs> Panavision at the movies, right, or chroma color, or uh, you just, uh, movies are ideal for this because they, they have the full sensory um, experience, but create it as vivid, lifelike, as if you're doing it right now, you're in it, you're having the experience, it's here, and imagine it over and over in your mind, and you're not only shaping your identity according to this experience, but you're creating almost like a memory or a vision or a pattern that's serving to program your subconscious mind, which will perform it. It, it just subconscious mind just does stuff. It doesn't ask why. It doesn't know it can't do stuff, right? It has a pattern. You've done this before. It's part of the personality. And next thing you know, you're just doing it. You're you're creating the behavior of the very thing that you desired to create. So we call this mental rehearsal. Um, there's many things right now. I'm not sure why they don't just say what it is, but, uh, you know, like the secret, and uh, there's all these different things about, you know, imagining, envisioning, you know, feeling it, and, you know, and it's really about what we have a desire for. Desire is a magnetic force that, uh, you know, what we feel a strong desire for. We're not only attracted to it, but it's attracted to us. It's like a, a stream of consciousness that pulls, it has a, a natural gravity to it. So we focus on something, we create strong desire for it, which is real positive emotion, passion, right? Enthusiasm, excitement, um, fascination. All those are very magnetic emotions. They, they draw us. Whatever draws you to something is simultaneously drawing that object to you or that experience to you. So keep that in mind. And when you imagine experiences, imbue them with strong positive emotion, strong desire and passion and excitement and enthusiasm and um, a, a sense of like fascination and curiosity. Curiosity is a great emotion for attracting what, we, what we're curious about, we're attracted to and, and it attracts to us. So, but this is another way that we can actually learn knowledge is by bringing it into the imagination, creating an experience of it that 
simultaneously like a hypnotic suggestion programs the subconscious mind with behavior with you know tells it to do it and we're, at the same time we're, we're programming our environment and creating a magnetic force for the very thing that we're imagining as if it was true experience we're shaping our identity to be the type of person having that experience we can see ourselves in that experience easily right and that's uh, it's, it's basically you are creating experience almost like you're doing actual experience but they're basically the same thing at once you move past the conscious level of the mind so um, learn how to use your imagination and run mental rehearsals in your mind mental you know play something out play something out and until you get it exactly the way you want it and then repeat it put strong emotions into it create a desire for it and Repetition is the key. Repeat it, repeat it, so that you can see yourself doing it. It feels natural. It, you know, it shapes your identity. You can see yourself doing that. You feel like you're that type of person, and you create the traits or the character that you know will have that experience or is capable of having that experience. So, um, those are two primary ways that we have experiences: actual and imagined. So, um, uh, learn how to use this ability and you'll be amazed at the changes that it brings about in your life. So, um, so again, for in-depth training, uh, coaching, mentoring, counseling, uh, visit our website at creativetransformations.biz and uh, set an appointment, uh, see if there's any programs that interest you. If not, uh, we can work one-on-one, -on -one, do personal training as well. And we also do business consulting and, and come in and teach psychological skills in a business environment. So. Um, Anyway, practice, remember, practice is the key to everything. You don't learn anything if you don't practice it. And we hope to see you.